Back in 2009, filmmaker Tom Six shocked and horrified audiences with one of the most disgusting body horror visuals ever committed to film. He rounded out his trilogy last year, so it seems like a good time to look back on the Human Centipede series up next on the Batcave. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of The Bat Cave. I am your host, Lady Hellbat, and today I want to talk about a series of movies that is very provocative, that I personally have some pretty mixed feelings on. I had feelings about the movies that changed and shifted as each new installment came out, and now that the Human Centipede trilogy is complete as of last year, I feel like it's a good time to look back on it and talk about the series as a whole. Now, I can remember the first time I heard about The Human Centipede. I was actually on a road trip with some friends and we were coming back to town after a funeral. So the mood was pretty low and somebody piped up and said, did you hear about the movie of the evil doctor who stitches three people together mouth to ass? And we're like, what? And sure enough, we just all flip out our phones and we can look up the trailer and sure enough, in the trailer, it was right there. An evil, sadistic German doctor sews three people up, ass to mouth, and what's more, the trailer claimed that the whole procedure was 100% medically accurate. We laughed and laughed and I knew that I had to see this film as soon as it came out. So the Human Centipede first sequence made the festival circuit in 2009. It was at London Fright Fest, it premiered at Sitges, and it actually did really well on the festival circuit. Audiences loved it, it even won a couple of awards. From there, the film was so notorious that Tom Six was able to finagle a limited theatrical release, and the theatrical release in the US had audiences a bit more divided. I think partially the reason why that is is because people at film festivals, horror fans at film festivals, are in it for a horror movie. They're in it to be grossed out and delighted by something as fucked up as The Human Centipede, whereas a theatrical release with mainstream audiences, I mean, horror does have a lot of crossover with critically successful movies, Silence of the Lambs, The Exorcist, these are kind of the mainstay examples of that, but Human Centipede isn't really up there. It's not the kind of movie that you're going to suggest that your mom put in the DVD player and watch on her night off. Like, no, it's the kind of movie you're going to dare your friend to watch and then film his reaction to put up online later. Before I get into the movies, I feel like I have to warn you about spoilers. I mean, maybe I don't. I'm still kind of new to the YouTube game and I feel like the movies have been around long enough that you guys know what happens, right? But still, fair warning. If you haven't seen the movies, go watch them and then come back and resume from here. So the Human Centipede first sequence opens up with some American 20-somethings, Lindsay and Jenny, played by Ashley C. Williams and Ashlyn Yenny, respectively, and they're driving through the German countryside looking for a party. Now their car breaks down and they're walking through the woods and it's revealed that they're easily the most irritating 20-somethings we've seen in films since maybe Hostel. But they arrive at the house of Dr. Joseph Heiter, who's a retired surgeon played by Dieter Laser. So he brings them into his beautiful isolated home and he drugs them and they wake up later in his underground lab. And here it is revealed that Dr. Heiter used to be famous for splitting up Siamese twins. But now the project, his dream project that he has in mind is to actually fuse three people together, ass to mouth, to share a digestive tract. And I'm sure you've seen the graphic, I'm sure you've seen the diagram that he presents to them. It's become the ubiquitous, it's become everybody's favorite doodle. And he goes ahead and he does it. He knocks out the girl's teeth and sews them all together, as well as a Japanese tourist named Katsuro, who also had the misfortune of coming across Dr. Hyder's home. So with the operation complete, he takes his new pet out for a spin. He takes it out into the garden, teaching it to walk, teaching it to obey commands. It's like he's treating it as some kind of crude pet. Eventually, a pair of detectives show up investigating the disappearance of the tourists, and there's this whole gunfight that leaves the detectives and Dr. Hyder dead. 
Unfortunately for the centipede, this isn't their great opportunity to escape because Katsuro has had just about enough of being a human centipede and so he slashes his own throat. And meanwhile, on the back end, poor Jenny is dying from blood poisoning, leaving Lindsay sewn in the middle all alone to two corpses. Now, what I loved most about the first Human Centipede movie, and what I didn't actually expect, is that it doesn't actually belabor the idea of the Human Centipede. I mean, obviously, that is the film's main concept. That is the conceit. That is the gross-out that we're all here to see, and it happens. It delivers in that respect. You're gonna see the operation, you're gonna see their horror as they learn what's gonna happen to them, you're gonna see the centipede crawl around, and yeah, you're gonna see the inevitable poop scene. It happens, and then the film moves on. There's so much more to this film than those gross-out scenes. Overall, I found it to be a surprisingly conventional horror movie. I feel like you could have substituted the human centipede with just about any form of weird fucked up German torture and it would have worked just as well, which is actually a testament to the film in its ability to build suspense and characterization. The character of Lindsay is especially interesting to me. We're kind of forced into her perspective of the situation. And my favorite part about Lindsay is that at one point she actually escapes. Prior to the surgery, she escapes the room and she's running through the house and she falls into Dr. Hyder's pool. And Dr. Hyder hits a button that forces the pool cover mechanism to come slowly across the surface of the pool and here you have Lindsay with an obvious choice between life and death. She can choose to drown or she can choose to fight against it and I guess we never really know if just human instinct kicks in and it's a matter of survival and so she decides to live but she survives, she goes through the procedure, she takes her chances with that I guess and then in the very end she is the one to live. She is the one to survive this whole ordeal in the most hopeless circumstance that anyone can imagine. So I actually thought that was pretty compelling for such a gimmicky exploitative horror film. So with the subtitle first sequence you knew that there was going to be a sequel to The Human Centipede and so the sequel Human Centipede 2 full sequence also written and directed by Tom Six came out in 2011. Now the second film features Lawrence R. Harvey as Martin Lomax, a really loathsome, overweight, asthmatic, introverted, creepy loser of a parking attendant dude who sits in his parking lot and he's obsessed with the first Human Centipede movie. In fact, the very first shot of the film has the credits rolling from the first Human Centipede. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a meta step back where this is picking up right where the other one left off, sorta, except in another layer of reality. So Martin Lomax is a very miserable human being. He lives at home with his very domineering mother. He's seeing a therapist for his issues, which it's kind of implied that he's definitely had some sexual abuse, trauma issues, which his therapist is actually exploiting. And he is just about the weakest, most pathetic human being you would ever want to meet. Now, he becomes obsessed with the Human Centipede movies and he becomes obsessed with the idea of one-upping Dr. Hyder. He thinks the Human Centipede is so cool, but what if he could do it with 10 people together asked to mouth? So he makes it his personal mission to capture people who come in contact with him in his parking lot and steal them away to a warehouse where he performs the procedure. He manages to make a 10-person human centipede, including Ashlyn Yenny, star of the first film that he lures into his warehouse with the promise of a new Tarantino role. And he performs the procedure very, very crudely, where Dr. Hyder had an aesthetic and nice stitches, Martin Lomax is using duct tape and a staple gun, and the results are absolutely disgusting. Also, it bears mention that Martin Lomax is extremely fucked in the head, and he doesn't just want to sew up his human centipede and watch it walk around and play with it. He really wants that poop scene to happen, so he injects them with laxatives to hasten his favorite part, and he's got some sexual hang-ups as well, so he 
has his own fun with it, let's just say. Now, I won't go into much more detail about the plot other than it's extremely raunchy. It's filmed in a really grainy black and white. It's like, it's like a surveillance tape that we shouldn't be seeing. I feel like the overall point to The Human Centipede 2 was that this was the gritty exploitation film that everyone expected the first one to be. But it's not. It's its own film. It has its own perspective. It has its own mood and motivations for the ultimate gross-out scene, which is the creature that he creates. And ultimately, it serves to show that this concept can be approached in more than one way. Whether you make it colorful and imaginative or gritty and black and white, there are different directions you can take this concept. And I thought it was cool that he took two of them and kind of tied them together in a self-referential manner. However, it bears mention that the second one, for as disgusting and as raunchy as it is, it's also oddly hilarious. It's very dark humor, for sure. And there's actually a really interesting behind-the-scenes video up here on YouTube where you can see what it was like behind the scenes of the film. And everybody is having a blast. They're cracking up. They've got this whole gallery of fake bums that they have to tape onto themselves and sew their little mouths onto and everybody's cracking up and having a blast. So there's a certain playfulness in spite of the dark realism in this film that I think is really fun. So I thought that contrast between the first two films was really cool and it made me so excited for the third film, The Human Centipede 3 Final Sequence. Now, Tom Six had a trilogy in his mind all along, and so I was really interested to see how he was going to wrap all this up. So not only was I so excited to see The Human Centipede 3, I had my very first opportunity at a cover story feature at Room Morgue Magazine. The editor-in-chief approached me, like, I know you really like the first two films, how would you like to write this cover story where you're going to interview filmmaker Tom Six, you can interview Dieter Laser and Lawrence R. Harvey, you can interview anyone you want and really get into the meat and bones of these films. And I was like, yup, I'm on it. I'm perfect for this because I get it. I thought that I got these films. I thought that I understood what Tom Six was trying to do. And then I saw the third film. So The Human Centipede Part 3 Final Sequence Dieter Laser returns to the franchise as Bill Boss, who is a prison warden, and his assistant, played by Lawrence R. Harvey, is Dwight, and the two of them are trying to get this Texas prison under control. But the prison is totally haywire. The prisoners aren't responding to any form of authority whatsoever. They're totally unruly and disrespectful and they yell out horrible things all the time. And Bill Boss's response is just to torture them. He tries castration, he tries waterboarding, he tries everything and nothing seems to work. And it so happens that his assistant Dwight is a big fan of the human centipede films. And so he suggests consulting filmmaker Tom Six and having him come into the prison and talk about exactly how medically accurate that procedure really is. Now, the film right off the bat is nearly unwatchable by way of Dieter Laser's screaming and yelling. Bill Boss is constantly shouting, constantly shouting profanity in his thick, thick accent to the point where you're like, I can't understand a word he's saying. And then you start to understand what he's saying and you're like, oh, no, I want to go back to not being able to understand what he was saying. Like, can I just la 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 la? The dialogue is terrible. It is so hard to watch. So eventually, okay, Tom Six comes into the scene and he's like, well, I've got the perfect idea, guys, you know? You can't lip off to the guards with your mouth full. Know what I mean? So the ultimate climax of the film, which was essentially revealed in the film's trailer, was to make a huge 500-person centipede out of these prisoners. But by the time you got to that big reveal, you've been so visually and orally assaulted by this film that you just don't give a fuck anymore. Like the film is crude to the point of arbitrary and it really feels like it's trying too hard to shock and offend you. And I really feel like that's a tremendous shame because I was able to glean so much meaning and purpose from the first two films that this third film just kind of throws all of that into question. 
So as I mentioned, I was writing this story for Rue Morgue, so I got to talk to Tom Six about it, and he was actually very transparent about his objective, which was simply to one-up himself. He wanted this film to be set in America, where everything is big gulp double XL, and so that's why the movie is so extravagant and so extreme, is that's the kind of scope he was going for. Also, the Human Centipede 3 actually realizes the gag that he's been going for all along. Initially, the idea of the Human Centipede came from him and his buddies fucking around one day and just being like, you know, you know what they should do with pedophiles? They should take them and just like sew their mouth around the asshole of a trucker. That was the idea, and that was the gag that permeates all three of the movies, except in The Human Centipede 3, Tom Six was finally able to make it about punishment, make it about prisoners, and not about innocent people being in the wrong place at the wrong time. As a matter of fact, Dieter Laser was initially really excited to work with Tom Six on another film, but when he saw the script, he was like, oh, fuck no, and a lawsuit practically ensued that delayed production for several months. In addition, there are several crew members who worked on The Human Centipede 2 who didn't want to put their full name in the credits of The Human Centipede 3, so that tells you something. Ultimately, all The Human Centipede 3 accomplished for me was that I straight up don't ever want to see another Human Centipede movie. I'm done. But overall, I am still glad those movies exist. The first one came out in 2009, and in 2009, the horror movies had gotten kind of boring, at least the domestic ones had. Audiences were ready for some international horror and some international extreme horror. That's around when a Serbian film came out. That's about when we saw the emergence of martyrs on Western shores, and I think we were finally ready to watch something of that scope, so I'm grateful for it in that respect, even if the trilogy lost me about two-thirds of the way in. Now, I still love the first Human Centipede movie, and as luck would have it, I happen to have three copies of it on DVD right here that I would love to give away to my new YouTube friends. So to enter to win these, all you need to do is subscribe to the Batcave, comment below, and include the hashtag THC so that I know you're meaning to enter the contest. So that's it for this episode of the Batcave, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.